Power Defense Simulator released a special event in collaboration with Roblox itself, The Hunt, an event in game with multiple modes and special prizes. So I set out to fully complete the event, winning on both difficulties and claiming all of the rewards. So the game mode got released with a countdown timer in the lobby, which had been set up a few days in advance. But when it struck zero, oh my god. A Portal to an event was unveiled, along with a live data tracker for the remaining number of eggs. Uh, because this is actually a special hat you can get, I'll talk about this later. In the moment, I decided to beeline for the new game mode itself, where I was agreed with a choice. Beginner, hard. Bro, I'm going straight to hard. This game's easy, dog. In the mode, you're greeted by a retro Roblox-styled map. A bit basic looking, for reasons that'll come up later. And the zombies are these core blocks themed dudes. Because this entire event is based around a $300 Roblox package. I didn't really know what I was doing yet. I got a farm down, almost always a bad idea in events, and tried spamming some golden scouts. But that didn't work at all, and I died on the first wave. Joining back to the lobby though, some UI clearly laid out the objectives. Beat the event on easy mode, do a special quest for an egg hat, and win on hard mode for an entirely exclusive new skin. There's also a secret little badge you'll go for at the end. First of all, I decided to actually do easy mode here. This is meant for like, new new players, so it does actually give you a pre-made loadout here, featuring some pretty strong towers. Unfortunately, hopping in game here, I ran into a bit of a glitch. I can place minigunner and I can place scout. I can't place anything else. Uh-oh. You're supposed to get these five towers, but the game seemed to bug out, and it gave me my normal loadout, but just didn't let me use half the towers. So kind of against my will here, I decided to do a minigunner only challenge. I did have to tank all the zombies on the first wave before I could get it down, which was a bit spooky. But when I did place it, it shredded and shot right into this cactus. The core blocks undeads were no problem, and in wave 3, I was able to get a second minigunner up and going. On wave 4, the core blocks warrior spawns with 500 health, but he was low-key chonky. He was slow enough that my minis were able to take him out, and things were pretty straightforward from there. A few more powerful zombies spawned, like the Red Cliff Trader, a reference to some Roblox item lore, and the core blocks general with 5,000 health. But by just constantly placing and maxing out minigunners, everything got melted, and I reached wave 10, the final wave. At this point, the map itself had also begun to corrupt, with a chaotic swirling background and chunks of terrain floating off into the air. A really cool effect honestly, and probably why they went with the retro style Roblox aesthetic. With my battalion of minigunners, I was ready for the final boss, the Corblox Deathwalker, aka the $300 Roblox item this whole event is advertising. Unlike his later powered up version in hard mode, the easy mode variant has only 15,000 health, and the Corblox generals protecting him weren't too tough. He did have this boss ability, which briefly stunned my towers, but I was still able to defeat the Deathwalker with little trouble. The defeat animation played, the map's damage was reverted, and I successfully earned the Triumph Badge. Completing the first objective, but this didn't get me the special egg hat, this actually just unlocked the quest, which I also had to complete to get the hat. SMH, SMH. And this objective was, beat the normal game's easy mode, three times, while only using towers from this pool of six, known as the starters. This is where having sunk hundreds of hours into this game finally paid off, because you know TDS has that whole golden crate system, and two of these starter towers had golden perks, scout and soldier. So I decided my strategy would be, just spam the golden scouts throughout the entire game, get a couple demo man for their explosive splash damage, and win. Yeah, that's it. This worked out pretty well to start. Max them out one by one, and there's not a lot to talk about honestly. I destroyed easy mode. Normal boss got cooked. Slow boss got cooked. Egg got scrambled. Gravedigger, the final boss with 15,000 health, got cooked. And I earned my first triumph, putting me 33% closer to the egg. The next game was the exact same story. Total domination. Very boring. Very easy. I'm just watching these gold scouts absolutely farm everything. The gravedigger went down just as easily again, and I hopped into the last match of the quest. I was also watching YouTube on my phone while doing this, literally the subway surfers meme, and my gameplay was a bit sloppy because of that. These placements weren't exactly the best, but despite that, I was again able to kill the gravedigger and complete the quest. Rejoining the lobby, I was a bit confused about how to actually claim the egg, but then I walked over to this platform that said, Claim your reward. Who would have thought? After pressing E, this neat little animation played, and I earned the Roblox item. Equipping it, it's beautiful. I'm now pretty drippy, you cannot deny. 
But that's not the event 100%ed. I still had to earn the exclusive skin, along with the secret, literal easter egg badge. I wanted a full team for hard mode, but unfortunately the online auto matchmaking system went down, as it always does whenever there's a new event. So I had to try to make a party in game. I first tried this server, but there was a bit of a language barrier there, so I dipped. I had better luck with my second attempt as I teamed up with Adder, Dying Birds, and Red, and we looked to decimate this challenge mode. I brought some good towers, Adder brought some good towers, Red even brought some good towers, Dying Birds didn't have a loadout, because back in the lobby, I had instant started the match when he joined, uh, so that was unlucky. Even with only 3 players, we were able to survive the early game thanks to Golden Pyromancers and Golden Cowboys. These core blocks warriors did start to push somewhat far along the path, but I got my first accelerator down just in time, and we survived. I got my discount DJ shortly after, and there's actually this goofy little drivable car on the map, I messed around with that for a bit, and we were doing alright from there. Around wave 8 is where things started spiraling out of control. Not because it was that challenging, but just due to the sheer number of zombies spawning. Like it was starting to lag a little bit, and this would only intensify later on. Wave 10 was not the final wave here. Instead, there was a flood of weaker core blocks enemies, and then a bunch of these core blocks generals. But by this point, we did have commanders giving fire rate buffs, and an army of accelerators acting as their main DPS source. But I mean, the amount of zombies here was absurd. This looks like an admin abuse video. And I was starting to seriously lag. Some red cliff traders pushed pretty far. Dying birds was just chilling on the car. But disaster struck in wave 13. I got disconnected. And I was very worried that I just lost out on the winning attempt and the exclusive skin. Please let me rejoin. My job's not finished. Okay, it actually is sending me back. Thank the lord. I did manage to get back by wave 14, just before the final boss. Again, at this point the map itself was breaking down, and this time, the Deathwalker meant business. His health bar was massively juiced up to 80,000, and even though we were missing one player worth of firepower, the units we did have down were cooking. The boss did use his spirit frost ability smoke thing to stun some of our towers. The wiki hasn't updated yet, I don't know what it's called. But the raw DPS of accelerators was just silly here. With the boss getting turned around by Jester and Adder using the commander's call to arms in the meantime, we got him down to half health super early. He kept spamming that same ability over and over, but he really wasn't doing anything. And with plenty of track remaining, we defeated the boss, earning a hefty coin payout, but more importantly, the unique core block skin. And honestly, this skin is pretty sick. It's for the Warden Tower, and features the signature glowing eyes of the Deathwalker, along with some kind of medieval type Nordic sort of vibe clothing. And he wields a painful looking mace, Minecraft reference. The first three levels all look solid, but not too crazy. However, in the max upgrade is where the skin really shines. It gets beefier armor, and its mace gains even more spikes, along with some heavy particle effects blowing icy smoke. It also gets a beefy shield, replacing the warden's normally futuristic riot shield. I think for keeping within the theming of this kinda stupid Roblox bundle, they actually did a really good job with this, and even the actual enemies of the event itself. Okay, so that's all the obvious stuff done, but there's one more little secret. There is this TDS badge, simply called eggs and to get this all you have to do is go on the event map and look around for these five different roblox eggs hidden in little corners and crevices simply walk up and touch them all and you'll get awarded this badge it doesn't actually give you anything in game or any roblox item reward it's just a fun little secret and yeah that is everything to do in the event i 100 percent of that bad boy i don't know i, I want to do an outro i'll put everything on screen everything i want you to do i'm putting it on screen right now thanks for watching